Get ready to cheer on Team USA. Sign up for Xfinity Internet and get a Flex 4K streaming box free and Peacock Premium included. Can your internet do that? Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Peacock subscription required. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. Sun, surf, and seduction collide as four Americans return to exotic islands hoping their sexy romances can turn into forever. Love in Paradise, the Caribbean, a 90-day story. Streaming now only on Discovery+. Plus. Start your free trial. Terms apply. The USA Radio Network presents the greatest radio programs of all time. Jack Benny program. Look, bud, I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Straighten up that closet one of these days. <laughs> This is classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Uh. <laughs> the Bob Hope Show. Transcribed direct from Hollywood. Well, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. Now here's your host, Wyatt Cox. Let's laugh a little with Eve Arden and our Miss Brooks. This episode, originally broadcast March 26, 1950 as they try to come up with money for new baseball uniforms. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, the baseball season is rapidly getting underway, and our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is full of enthusiasm for our national pastime. Yes, I am enthusiastic about the national pastime. Largely, I must admit, because of the enthusiasm for the game felt by one Philip Boynton, my national pastime. <laughs> Last Thursday morning at breakfast, my landlady asked me, how come? How come this sudden interest in baseball, Connie? Seems to me you never cared about the game very much. Oh, you're wrong, Mrs. Davis. I always had a deep-rooted love for the game. It just took someone to bring it out. <laughs> Mr. Boynton. It wasn't Ty Cobb. <laughs> the way I look at it, baseball will eventually further our romance. How do you mean, Connie? Well, I figure if he spends enough time looking at curves and watching fellows trying to get to first base, it might give him an idea. <laughs> He's a backward sort, all right. Not about baseball. Tomorrow's the opening game, Mrs. Davis, with Clay City High, and already Mr. Boynton's invited me to go with him. Now, of course, my troubles just begin. I've got to have a nice sport outfit to wear to the game. What's wrong with the outfit you've got? Mr. Boynton's seen me wearing it three times already. Three times? Yes, to the opening games of 1949, 48, and 47. <laughs> I made up my mind that this year, when they throw out the first ball, I'm throwing out that dress. <laughs> oh, if only I wasn't so broke. Let me think a minute. If there was somebody who could lend me... I'm broke too, Connie. <laughs> if there was somebody else who could... No, I guess borrowing isn't the answer. Wait a minute, Connie. I was talking to Mr. Fisher yesterday. He's the nice man who runs the pawn shop on 4th Street. I know. We've met several times. <laughs> well, I just happened to drop in yesterday to see that my brother Victor's cigarette case was polished. And Mr. Fisher showed me the nicest sport dress. Brand new. He had just picked it up at Sherry's department store at their spring sale. A sport dress? What did he want it for, waiting on trade? Oh. <laughs> it's not for himself, Connie. It was for his daughter. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for you, it didn't fit her. And he couldn't take it back to Sherry's because all sales were final. So? So maybe he'd be willing to let you have it on a swap. But what could I swap him for it? Well, uh, no, I'll need these fillings as I get older. <laughs> I'd be glad to let you take the vacuum cleaner, Connie. 
Well, that's very generous of you, Mrs. Davis, but wouldn't it make it terribly inconvenient when you wanted to clean the rug? Oh, not at all. I'm pawning the rugs next week. <laughs> but with summer coming and all, it's much cooler in the house without rugs. Besides, I need the money for other things. Now, you just take the Hoover and stop off at Mr. Fisher's on your way to school. I certainly appreciate your kindness, Mrs. Davis, but I sort of hate the idea of having to get anything like this at a pawn shop, I mean. I don't see why you should feel that way, Connie. It's just like any other business, and a lot older than most. Take Christopher Columbus, for instance. Without a pawn shop, where would he be today? Same place. <laughs> You're right, Mrs. Davis, though. If Queen Isabella hadn't raised the money on her jewels, Columbus couldn't have discovered America. Exactly. Then where would you be? That's easy. I'd be teaching Indian kids for very little wampum. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Fisher. Well, Miss Brooks, I haven't seen you since you redeemed your locket. Correction. You haven't seen me since I pawned it again. After the holidays, remember? Oh, of course. It was on a Monday in January. I recall it because I took in six pairs of binoculars that day. The better to see my locket with, my dear. <laughs> but what I'm here about this morning is a slight business deal. You see, Mrs. Davis suggested that you might be interested in this vacuum cleaner. Well, Mrs. Davis is an old friend, but frankly, we don't have too much of a call for vacuum cleaners. Oh, and... I don't want any money on it. I just want to swap. You'll find plenty of use for the vacuum cleaner, too, because Mrs. Davis is about to put her rugs in your protective custody for the summer. Again? <laughs> well, then I guess I could use the vacuum at that. Now, well, let's see now. What could I give you in return? Oh, here's something that might come in handy. It's for dressing and undressing, a genuine Chinese screen. Well, actually, we have very few Chinese getting dressed at our play. <laughs> uh, what I had in mind, Mr. Fisher, was this blue and gold sport dress over here. Those happen to be our school colors and... Well, I'm going to our opening baseball game tomorrow. I understand, my dear. You're perfectly welcome to the dress. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Fisher. Uh, just one thing, though, Miss Brooks. Are you sure the dress will fit you? Even if it doesn't, I'll look better in it than I would in the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooke. Hello, Harriet. How's the beloved daughter of Madison's beloved principal this morning? Fine, thanks. Are you going past Daddy's office? As fast as possible. <laughs> what can I do for you? Would you mind dropping this letter on his desk? It just arrived. All right, I'll take it in. Thanks. Oh, and I almost forgot. Would you take this loving cup? Just for delivering a letter? <laughs> it's the baseball trophy Madison won last year. Daddy asked me to pick it up after it was polished. I've got to run now. I want to catch Walter Denton before he invites anyone else to the opening game tomorrow. I know the feeling. See you later, Harriet. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. I've got something for you. That is a matter of opinion. <laughs> Oh, oh, the, the trophy. Oh, yes, well, put it on my desk, please. Yes, sir. There. Anything else? Oh, yes, sir. Harriet gave me a letter for you. Now, where in the world did I put it? Let me look in my bag. Oh, it must be in here somewhere. Oh, that's funny. I can't seem to find it. Miss Brooks, <laughs> each day the post office department handles hundreds of tons of mail. They carry it on trains and boats and planes over thousands of miles of varying terrain. They go through rain and sleet and snow and dark at night. And you can't be trusted to walk ten yards with one loud one letter. Please, sir, I, I may have dropped it in the hall. I'll go out and look for it in a minute. Meanwhile, I wish you'd cheer up a bit. Think of the ball game tomorrow and how we're going to whip Clay City High. You picked a perfect subject to elevate my spirits, Miss Brooks. 
For your information, there will be no game tomorrow. What? But you can't do that to Mrs. Davis's vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I mean, I purposely got a brand new used sport dress for this game. I've been looking forward to it for months. So have I, Miss Brooks. Nothing would please me more than to soundly drub Jason Brill's Clay City Tigers. But the sad fact remains that we can't play them. Why not? Because through some appalling mismanagement of the athletic fund, our team has no uniforms. Who's been handling the athletic fund? Uh, that is beside the point. <laughs> I went a bit overboard on the basketball appropriation. Oh, this is awful, Mr. Conklin. Baseball is the most popular sport at Madison. How well I know it. That's why I've taken my glasses off, Miss Brooks. They steam up when I gaze at this statue near my desk. The bust of the man for whom we've named our athletic stadium. The one person responsible for inaugurating baseball at Madison. <laughs> our beloved founder, Yoda Critch. <laughs> you feel badly, sir. A lump comes into my throat when I think of how he would take this catastrophe. And when I hold this loving cup in my two hands... Uh, Mr. Conklin. Yes, Miss Brooks. Would you mind letting go of my ears? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'd better put my glasses back on. Look, Mr. Conklin, isn't there something we could do to make the game possible? I'm afraid not, Miss Brooks, unless we... Oh, wait a minute. Do you think our boys could play good ball without uniforms? I don't know how good they'd play, but they'd certainly draw a nice crowd. <laughs> our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first... March 26, 1950, our Miss Brooks on Classic Radio Theater... This is good news, maybe exactly when you need it to. Right now, MediShare is waiving their new member fees. This could save you money on top of all that you'll save each month by becoming a member of MediShare. So many people are looking for a healthcare solution right now, seeing the cost of COBRA plans, for instance, and MediShare is the affordable alternative to health insurance. The typical family saves $500 a month. You might save even more. MediShare is a Christian community that shares each other's health care costs, and because of the current economic situation, situation, they're making it easier than ever. Apply by March 31st. You can save an additional $170 on your first month. I'll give you the number here in a second. And if you call, you can get a price within two minutes. Just tell them the promo code SHARE to receive your additional savings. Maybe now is the time to make the switch like more than 400,000 people already have and start saving. Here it is. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. My classic radio theater friends and family, for over three years, you've heard me talking about how my pillow has changed my life, and it really has. I sleep better, and I feel better. And if you don't sleep good, you're not going to feel good. And my MyPillow Premium Pillow helps me so much. It is washable, dryable, made in the USA, and uh, it doesn't go flat. I sleep well all night long. A MyPillow Premium Pillow now, the best price you'll ever find at $29.98 for standard or queen size. King is only $5 more. You're saving 40 bucks. What a better price to try it. And you still got a 60-day warranty, 10-day money-back guarantee. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, and use my promo code USA. Or call 1-800-951-8175. Save 60% on anything on the MyPillow website when you use my promo code USA. Why do you think bank presidents and jewelry store owners trust ADT to protect their homes and businesses? Because they feel safe, and you can too. How would you like to monitor your home from fire, floods, and yes, robberies without even being there right from your smartphone? That is peace of mind. You may even save money on your homeowner's insurance just by having an ADT system installed. And there's even a money-back guarantee. How about that? We guarantee 100% satisfaction. You have nothing to risk. Why do you think people who have so much to protect trust ADT? Because it works. Call right now for a free quote. We'll even give you a free gift for calling. So pick up your phone and call Protect Your Home, an ADT authorized premier provider now. 800 818 0191. 
That's 800-818-0191. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. Now more of our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden from March 26, 1950. Well, Mr. Conklin refused to let our team play without the proper equipment, especially against Madison's traditional rival, Clay City High. I was pretty blue about the whole thing, so when lunch period arrived, I headed for Mr. Boynton's biology laboratory, my customary destination when I feel confused or unhappy or contented or cheerful or anything. (laughs) Hello, Mr. Boynton. I... Mr. Boynton? Oh, I'm over behind these cages, just doing a little repair work. Have you heard about the game being called off tomorrow? Yes, I'm just sick about it. I had my heart set on going to that game tomorrow. So did I. But don't be too depressed. We can still do something else together. (laughs) Together? Oh, Oh, that's right. You were going along to the game with me, weren't you? Obviously, I was indispensable to you. (laughs) But I know what might be fun. We could go to the movies right after school. By four o'clock, we could be sitting in the balcony at the State Theater. Oh, but the State doesn't open until 6.30. That's what I say. It might be fun. Uh, I I don't understand. How could we have fun sitting in a movie for two and a half hours if there's nothing else to do? Mr. Boynton, please do me a favor. The next time we're in the balcony, borrow the usher's flashlight and see how your fellow Americans are living. Uh, I guess I may seem pretty naive on occasion, Miss Brooks. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you're quite a man of the world. (laughs) Another world, of course. Now, suppose we go to lunch. I've got to finish early and drop into the domestic science room. Miss Westville promised to check my new sport dress and see what alterations it needs. Oh, is that what you've got in that box, a dress? Yes. Now, come on, Mr. Boynton, let's go. Well, I'll have to join you a bit later on, Miss Brooks. I've got to finish repairing the locks on these rabbit cages. They're brand new, too. I can't understand how these iron locks were broken. Must have some pretty tough rabbits in there. (laughs) Look at them, will you? Aren't they cute? I keep the female rabbits in one cage and the males in another. You would. (laughs) Uh, Try and get your work done as soon as possible, huh? I will, Miss Brooks. I'd go with you right now, but it's rather important. You know how rabbit cages are. Of course, you wouldn't want to come back from lunch and find six cages where there were two before. (laughs) Let's see now, where can I sit? Oh, there's Walter Denton. Mind if I join you, Walter? Not at all. Welcome aboard, almost appetizing morsel of Madison's faculty. Thank you, Walter. Well, it's a pleasure, I'm sure. Your apple-cheeked, cherry-lipped countenance is like meat and drink to my beauty-starved senses. Thanks again. Now get your teeth out of my arm and back into your saddle. <laughs> I'm afraid the ebullience of my greeting to you is not a true barometer of my feelings, Miss Brooks. No, no, we're formally cavorted the blithest of blithe spirits. There now sits a sodden lump of gloom, a veritable clod of a boy. Walter Denton, boy clod. (laughs) But if I may be permitted an observation in your native tongue... What, pray, is the cause of this unseeming cloddery? Oh, it's Harriet Conklin. We had an argument, and now she's not talking to me. Oh? What was the argument about? Well, it started when I heard that Mr. Conklin was calling off tomorrow's ball game. And I said, I couldn't understand how our athletic fund got into such bad shape that we couldn't afford uniforms for the team. Then? 
Well, then I mentioned Mr. Conklin's administration of the funds in a way that Harriet construed as derogatory. What did you say? I said he was a marble-headed dimwit. <laughs> I guess that could be construed as derogatory. <laughs> Look, I know how you feel, Walter. I'm disappointed, too, but after My all... My feelings transcend disappointment, Miss Brooks. They can only be described as abjectly abysmal, cataclysmically morbid, and horrendously depressive. What did you have for lunch today? A thesaurus <laughs> burger? <clears throat> Look, Walter, maybe all hope isn't lost. Oh, pardon me, Miss Brooks, but Mr. Conklin wants to talk to us about the ball game tomorrow. Yes, Miss Brooks, all hope is not lost. Now, you see, Walter, I told you. I knew it! I just knew if there was any possible chance to salvage that contest, Mr. Conklin would be the man to do it. Yes, sir. It isn't every school that can boast of a principal who, even when he's made a few prior mistakes with the athletic fund, can bounce right oh, back. Oh, and... quiet! <laughs> May we sit down with you for a moment, Miss Brooks? Certainly, sir. What's this about the game tomorrow? Do you really think we can hold it? That, my dear, depends upon the cooperation we get. Suffice it to say, I've contacted a sporting goods store in town who offered to rent us all the necessary uniforms and equipment for a paltry $25. Isn't that wonderful? Great. Have you got the paltry $25, Mr. Conklin? Uh, no, no, I haven't. My salary check doesn't come through until next week. However, that is not going to stop me. I feel now that I'm duty-bound to field a team against Clay City. Duty-bound? Yes, Miss Brooks. Only minutes ago, as I sat fondling our loving cup, symbol of Madison's baseball championship of bygone seasons, I looked up at the statue of our founder, Yoda Critch. And suddenly, I seemed to hear his voice say, with a tear in it, I started baseball at Madison Osgood. Keep it going, boy. <laughs> Then, then I heard myself saying, but Yoda, where can I get $25 for uniforms? And fantastic as it may sound, Yoda said, go, Osgood, go and get the money from Miss Brooks. <laughs> Are you following me, Miss Brooks? You lost me when Yoda said, go, Osgood. <laughs> It's such a worthy cause, Miss Brooks. If I had the money, I'd hand it over in a minute. So would I if you had the money. <laughs> or if I had it, for that matter. But my check doesn't come through until next week either. But surely you must have a little something salted away. Just salt, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Conklin, I wish I could be helpful, but I just can't. You rarely are. <laughs> I laid out my last $40 for those rabbit cages. I won't get it back from the board for over a month. And I just bought this sport dress with my last vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that is, I got it at a very expensive place, and I feel as if I've been run through a if vacuum cleaner. If we could cleaner. only borrow the money somewhere for just a few days, I'm sure... Wait a minute, could... Mr. Conklin. Did you say borrow? Why, yes. For just a few days? That's right. Sir, you've given me an idea. Yes, I'm almost positive it'll work. Now, just sit still, everyone. I've got a couple of stops to make. Gee, Miss Brooks, you look like you're on your way to a ball. You're close, Walter. I'm on my way to three of them. <laughs> Yes, back to the pawn shop. Uh, March 26, 1950, our Miss Brooks here on Classic Radio Theater. And we'll have the conclusion coming up in just a few moments, and we'll take you to Pine Ridge, Arkansas, and see what's going on in Lum and Abner's life. I'm Wyatt Cox. You're listening to Classic Radio Theater right here on your favorite station. Streaming only on Peacock. John Wayne Gacy killed 32. Straight from the killer's mouth. They want you to believe that I alone committed these murders. The new gripping six-part documentary series, John Wayne Gacy, Devil in Disguise. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. Streaming only on Peacock. John Wayne Gacy killed 32. Straight from the killer's mouth. They want you to believe that I alone committed these murders. The new gripping six-part documentary series, John Wayne Gacy, Devil in Disguise. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. Well, Christmas time is over, but you know what's not over? The My Pillow Special. 
a very special deal right now. And you've heard me talking about MyPillow now for close to three years. You know that the MyPillow never goes flat. You can wash them and dry them. They come out just as good as new. They maintain their shape. And they are made in the USA. They all come with a 10-year warranty. And for a limited time, Mike Lindell offering his premium MyPillows for a very special price. The standard or queen size premium my pillows forty dollars off twenty nine ninety eight. King size my pillows, the premium pillows, are only five dollars more. And the sixty day money back guarantee now has been extended to March first of twenty twenty one. What a great time to get a my pillow for you or the person you love. Yeah, I give it to them as a late Christmas gift. Just give it to them, or get an extra one for yourself. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, use my promo code USA, or call 1-800-951-8175 and use my promo code USA. The benefit of going online is that you can see all the other specials, the Giza Dreams bed sheets, MyPillow mattress topper, MyPillow dog beds, and the MyPillow towel sets that are absolutely wonderful. Uh... Don't wait. Go right now to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener special, use my promo code USA or call 1-800-951-8175. The best thing to get you in shape for a new year is the gift of a great night's sleep. MyPillow.com, radio listener square, use my promo code USA. Come feel the rush again at Busch Gardens and Water Country USA. Stay late for all new weekend concerts, nightly fireworks, and coasters in the dark. Plus, enjoy all the fun of Virginia's largest water park. It all tastes better with the refreshing taste of ice-cold Coca-Cola. At Busch Gardens and Water Country USA. Save up to 40% on tickets and fun cards during the 4th of July sale. Hurry, limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Streaming only on Peacock. John Wayne Gacy killed 32. Straight from the killer's mouth. They want you to believe that I alone committed these murders. The new gripping six-part documentary series, John Wayne Gacy, Devil in Disguise. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. All right, now on Classic Radio Theater... Uh, we conclude our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden from March 26, 1950. And how are we going to get the baseball uniforms? Well, here I am again, Mr. Fisher. I'm at the rear counter, Miss Brooks. Just step this way, please. Certainly. I know you're a busy man, Mr. Fisher, so I'll be brief. What will you give me for this bust of Yodar Critch? Well, now, I don't like to seem callous, Miss Brooks, but you'd be surprised how few calls I get for busts of Yodar Critchley. <laughs> yes, but I just want the money for a short time. Money? You want money for this? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. That would be out of the question. However, I've still got that large Chinese screen here. You could have that in exchange. Oh, excuse me. I think another customer is coming in. I'll get back to you in a minute. Another customer? If you don't mind, Mr. Fisher, I'd rather not be seen in here with this statue. I'll just duck behind the screen until he goes. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I'd like to borrow some money on what I have in this box. And what might that be? It's a blue and gold sport dress. <laughs> You want to pawn a sport dress? Oh, yes, sir. It belongs to uh, 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 my wife. You know, the little woman. <laughs> oh, the little woman. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't usually take in dresses. Uh, unless they're in the family, that is. But uh, uh, do you mind if we discuss this in a moment? Another customer is coming in. Oh, another customer? But I mustn't be seen in here with this dress. I'd better hide behind the screen until he's gone. <laughs> uh, don't rush yourself. It'll take him a few minutes to open the door. Generally, they peer into the window outside for quite a while before sidling in. <laughs> I don't want to take any chances. I'll see you later. Oh, pardon me. I didn't know anyone else was hiding behind... Miss Brooks! <laughs> don't stand there, hubby. Kiss the little woman. <laughs> oh, 
This is most embarrassing, Miss Brooks. I... Uh, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Well, I... Never mind that, Mr. Boynton. What are you doing with my dress? Well, I... Uh, never mind that, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? <laughs> Quiet, Mr. Boynton. Another customer just came in. Good afternoon, my boy. Can I help you? Yes, sir. I'd like to hawk these rabbit cages. <laughs> rabbit cages? Yeah, just for a short period, and then we'll take it off your hands. Rabbits and all. This is an interesting day. And business is booming, too. I see another customer is about to enter. Another customer? Oh, I don't want anybody to see me in here. I gotta hide somewhere. Shh. Room for one more down front. <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll just. Miss Brooks! <laughs> oh, you won't tell Mr. Boynton about these cages, will you? I'm sure she won't, Walter. <sighs> Good. I wouldn't want you to find out that I. <laughs> Miss Boynton! <laughs> Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? Well, I. Miss Brooks! What are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Never mind that, Walter. What are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cages? Never mind my rabbit cages, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? What are you doing with my dress, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? Well, that was fun. Shall we go around again? <laughs> We've got to figure out some way. We're Quiet, Walter. Another customer just came in. I can see through a crack in this screen. He's coming all the way back to the last counter. And what may I do for you, sir? I, sir, should like to negotiate a loan on this silver loving cup. <laughs> you mean you want to hock it? Don't be vulgar. $25 would relieve my temporary financial embarrassment, and the cup would be redeemed in a very short time. Well, uh... oh, good heavens, somebody's coming in. I can't be seen in this sort of establishment. I'll just hide behind this screen until he leaves. Oh, oh I'm sorry, boy. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Conklin. I'll move over. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Now, Miss Brooks, if you'll move over a bit so that I can stand between Mr. Boynton and yourself, I'm sure we'll all be... Miss Brooks! <laughs> Mr. Boynton! Walter Denton! <laughs> this is roll call. You've left out Yodar Critch. <laughs> So I have. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Well, I... Walter, what are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cages? Well, I... Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with Miss Brooks' dress? Yes, Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with my dress? Quiet, quiet. That sort of buck passing will never take my mind off that statue, Miss Brooks. It won't? Well, try this on for size, Mr. Conklin. What are you doing in this pawn shop with the Madison baseball trophy? Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> We're all here for the same purpose, to raise the money for the baseball uniform. Sure. Now, if Mr. Fisher will come through, we'll always... Well, my last customer just left. My, isn't it getting a little stuffy for you folks behind that screen? <laughs> Stuffier than ever lately. Mr. Fisher, this is a very strange situation, but we're all here after the same $25. Now, you've seen our collateral. Take any or all of it and please give us the money. Of course, my dear, of course. I'll give you $25 on this loving cup alone. Wonderful, Mr. Fisher. Now I won't have to cancel the game tomorrow. And, folks, our mutual mortification has not been in vain. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. There seems to be a letter in this loving cup. A letter? Oh, that must be the one Harriet gave me for you this morning. It probably dropped in the cup while I was holding them both. Uh, no doubt, Miss Brooks. Oh, I left my glasses at the office. Will you read the letter to me, please? Yes, sir. Why, it's from Jason Brill. It says, Dear Mr. Conklin... Due to a shortage in our athletic fund, I am forced to cancel tomorrow's baseball game because my team has no uniform. <laughs> well, we were all very disappointed by the postponement of the opening baseball game with Clay City. But my chagrin was short-lived because that night I had a date with Mr. Boynton. 
And soon I heard him saying... Come a little closer, Miss Brooks. All right. How's this? Closer. Like this? A little closer. Please, Mr. Boynton, if we get any closer to that movie screen, we'll be in the picture. <laughs> Turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Custard Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Frank Nelson. March 26, 1950, our Miss Brooks on Classic Radio Theater. While you have free time and you're sitting at home and you ponder what kind of gifts to buy for someone, PatriotDepot.com has you covered from puzzles, games, novelty items. If you're looking for some unique style items when it comes to the president, for more, you can check out PatriotDepot.com. Call 844-377-8052. That's 844-377-8052 or PatriotDepot.com. Use promo code USA. If you enjoy our classic radio theater broadcasts and want to start building a collection of your own, go to ClassicRadio.stream. That's ClassicRadio.stream. There you'll find links to great classic radio collections on CD, along with links to great reading on classic radio, plus classic radio theater on demand. Check out our webpage, available now at classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. And enjoy. Oh, come on. I hate you. You have no right to speak to me. You're stupid. You're evil. You believe in your God, guns, and gold. You shouldn't have the right to vote. We must fix this disgusting country now. We want socialism now. Whoa there, little fella. Our U.S. Constitution protects your right to say these things, even if they are drivel. Our founders believed in our inalienable rights granted by God, not some mafia. Our Bill of Rights protects your personal freedoms, your absolute right to speak to others, whether loving and kind or hateful and stupid. Utopia doesn't exist. It only destroys. Millions of innocents slaughtered by the communists in Cambodia, China, and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And millions of people were gassed by Hitler's National Socialist Party. Where do you stand? Help us save the Constitution and restore our American dream. Go to SaveMyFreedom.com. That's SaveMyFreedom.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. Rockstar Radio. Did you know this station, this network, is looking for their next rock star broadcaster? That's right, we are. And it could be you. It could be you interviewing the guests, talking to the newsmakers right in the middle of everything. Have you ever dreamed of being a rock star show host? Now could be your chance. Together with this station, we'll help you with everything you need. The studios, the equipment, your own producer, a co-host if you'd like, and so much more. Broadcasting is changing. There's never been a need for fresh voices and unique opinions like there is right now. You can do this. Our professional team will guide you every step of the way. Sound effects, show content, building your social network media, and everything you need to be the next rock star broadcaster. Get all the details. Email bill at rockstar.today. That's bill at rockstar.today. To get started with your own show, email bill at rockstar.today. That's bill at rockstar.today. Don't wait. You could be the next voice for America. Email bill at rockstar.today. All right, on Classic Radio Theater, we head to Pine Ridge, Arkansas, Lum and Abner, March 26th, 1945. Hey, Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. Hi, Dog is Lum, I believe you're right. Now, see. Hello, down shore. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> Now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the bad news that Mr. Chancellor was forsaking his proposed book about Lum and Abner became the good news that he had decided to change their story into a Broadway play. And to cement the deal, he gave them a check for $10,000 for all rights to the story. Lum is now able to pursue his romance to the utmost. And as we look in on the old fellows today, 
we find them emerging from the bank at the county seat. Listen. Well, that takes care of our banking. Now, let's head up the street for the jewelry store. Yeah, well, now, wait a minute, Lom. I don't understand just what happened in the bank there yet. We went in there, Mr. Chancellor's check for $10,000, and all we come out with just $950. Well, didn't you follow what went on? I don't believe I did. Well, uh, money we got ain't got nothing to do with the check. Huh. See, they wouldn't cash that big a check without sending it to Mr. Chancellor's hometown bank in Philadelphia for collection first, or something like that. Well, why wouldn't they cash it? Them other checks Mr. Chancellor gave us was good. Yeah, but them was just little dinky ones. Yeah, well, now, where did the $950 come from, then? Well, uh, that was just a business deal. Hurry up, I want to get to the jewelry store and buy that diamond ring. Well, I thought Squire Kemp was going to get that for you. Well, as long as we're here and I've got the money, I might as well get it myself. And after I get that, I'm going over to the courthouse and get a marriage license. You yeah. <laughs> there? Yes, sir. I've been waiting all my life to do this, and at last I've got the money to do it with. Well, I've still left to know how you got that money. Uh, you didn't do nothing unhonest, did you, Long? No, of course not. What do you mean? Well, what did you do then? Well, now, Abner, now, now, don't go flying off the handlebars. This is just temporary. Ah. Uh-huh. Quick as Mr. Chancellor's checks cash, we can pay off this little old mortgage. Well, uh, mortgage? Wait a minute, Long, did you mortgage the store again? Well, you do. You signed the mortgage papers just now yourself. Is that what I signed? Why, sure. Don't blame me if you don't get something over before you sign it. Well, you done everything so fast in there, I never knowed what was going on, Long. Well, that was it, and you done a good thing, too, because now we can buy that engagement ring at last. We? Oui. I don't see where I come in on this deal. Well, you've got a half interest in a diamond ring. Huh? At least wait till we pay off the mortgage on the store you have. Oh. Uh, well, if you give that to Miss Emmeline, well, then, or me and you both engage to her, then? Oh, of course not. No, sir. Well, I don't see where this deal's helping me any long. All I'm doing is taking chances on losing everything I own. Well, that shows you're a big businessman. Huh? A body's got to take chances to ever make a big success in business. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's the old lettered saying of mine. Yeah, but I don't see no chance in this for me. Well, ain't signing a mortgage on everything you own taking a chance? Well, sure it is, but... And don't you believe a feller's got to take a chance before he ever makes anything? Yeah, I know he has, Lord. Well, that's the reason I say you got a good deal, and I want to compliment you. Oh, yeah. I admire a man that's got the courage to back his own judgment. A plunger. Man, I don't feel right you saying all them nice things about me, Lum, for I done it accidental. I never even knowed what them papers was that I signed. Well, that's all the more reason why I want to compliment you. Taking a chance like that and never even knowing it. <laughs> well, thank you, Lum, but I still don't. Wait, wait a minute, here's the jewelry store. Is this the jewelry store I've been in? the jewelry's in there. Oh, doggies, look at that. Well, you don't have to stick your nose right up against the glass to see these jewelry's in there. <laughs> Doggy, that glass feels cold again, a feller's nose. <laughs> now, look at the glass there. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I probably don't. Now. Come on, let's now, go in by our ring. Yeah, all right. I still can't figure this thing out, though. I know that. Just stop worrying about it. Yeah, how do you do, sir? My name's Lum Edwards. I want to buy a... Oh, sorry, partner. I ain't the man. That's him back at the counter. Oh. I'll give you the minute, gentlemen. Now, for the last time, I'm not interested in doing business with you. Okay, okay. All right, now. What is it for you, sir? Uh, my name's Lum Edwards, and I, I want to buy an engagement ring. I see. What'd you have in mind? He just told you an engagement ring. Well, yes, I know, but I mean, what price range? Uh, I don't want a range. I want a ring. I don't care what the price is. What I want is the biggest dead blame diamond you got in this store. Yes, sir. I see. Well, now, let me show you what we have. See, I told you I wasn't interested in doing business with you. Okay, okay. Uh, now then, here's a few rings. Mm, it's a, I'm here, a good stone. No, it ain't big enough. Well, it's about the biggest I have. You might get into something like the sweetheart set, the sweetheart. matched, yeah, the matched engagement ring and wedding ring. Well, I'll run you a little more money. Eighty-seven fifty. Hmm. Uh, ain't you got nothing bigger than that? Oh, not in stock. I can order you a nice solitaire. No, had my heart set on a diamond. Well, that is a diamond. I'll show you what we have in the catalog. How long will it take you to order one? Well, the way things are now, I couldn't promise it to you in less than three weeks. I hate to wait that long. Ah, here's what we have in the catalog. There's the biggest one right there. If you're actually interested in that, it's uh, 1500 Fifteen hundred. Uh, how big is it? 
Well, that's the actual size picture there. Is that all the bigger it is? Blow me, honey, you ought to get a diamond big as a basketball. Yeah, well, I don't know. I believe I'll think this over first. Yeah, all right. See, I told you once to leave. Okay, okay, I'm leaving. Yeah, I believe I'll sort of study this over. Got a couple of other places I want to look. If I don't find nothing big enough there, I might be back. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah, much obliged to you. Come on, Abner, let's go. Yeah, yeah, sure. Blame it all, anyway. Had my heart set on buying that ring today. I can't wait no three weeks. Must be short of materials if it takes that long to make them. Yeah, well, where's them other places you going to look, Long? Ain't but this one jeweler to one town. I know. I, I never had no other place to go. I just said that for an excuse not to buy nothing there. Loan me $1,500. That outcaps anything I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have minded the price so much if I could have got something for my money. Fact is, I was aiming to go seven or eight hundred dollars if I seen one big enough. You was seven hundred dollars for just one little ring? Well, here's the way I look at it, Abner. A feller don't get married every day. And... No, or not to. Besides that, there's nothing too good for Miss Emily. Uh, hey, partner. Huh? Uh, do you mind if I sort of walk along with you? I have something that might interest you. Oh, you're the fellow we seen in the jewelry store there, ain't you? Uh huh, that's right. I understand you're in the market for a diamond. Well, yeah, I am, sorter. Well, you'll never find what you want in those little jewelry stores. In the first place, they charge you too much. I'll eat a man that read more. Now, I've got just the stone you're looking for, and I'll guarantee that you get your money's worth. I've got no overhead, you see, no fancy store to keep up. Here, partner, just take a look at that. Uh, oh, Granny. Yeah, let me see, Mom, let me see. Now, that's more like it. How much do you want for it? Two grand. Ah. Uh, Two thousand dollars. Two thousand. Well, I... Eighteen hundred. I don't know. I see that. Fifteen hundred. Well, I'm sure that's just... Well, uh, uh, how much money have you got, partner? Well, all I got with me is just $950. But now in a week or so, yes, I'll... Uh, have... Is that all in cash? Yeah, every cent of it. Brother, you've just bought yourself a diamond. Get out your money. It's a deal. Well, that's good enough for me. Ain't that good news, Abner? Well, I don't know now. Uh, all I want to know is where you live and where the stone's going to be. Well, I, I live in Pine Ridge out here about 30 miles, and the diamond will be on the second... Or, no, the, uh... Third finger of the left hand of Miss Emmeline Platt. She's a school teacher out there. And my future finance. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, there's your rock. Don't bother to count the money. I trust you. All right, here you are. Thank you, and good luck to your partner. You're going to need it. Yeah, well, much obliged to you, too. Hey, Granny, Abner, just look at that thing. Yeah, Long, do you think you've done right in buying that from a stranger that way? I don't care who I buy it from. Just so as I get it. That's all I care about. And I know I got a bargain, dude. Just, just look at the size of that thing. <laughs> look how it sparkles. More like that, just a hunk of glass. Glass don't sparkle that way. Yeah, well, he could have put some fire polish on it and shined it up or now, not. Stop saying things like that. Well, he even called it a rock himself. And he did, didn't he? Why, sure, you better catch that fella now and get your money back long. Well, he's plumb out of sight by now. And I don't know where to look for him. Oh, my goodness. This might be a good diamond, though. I know. Let's go back to that jewelry store. Huh? Let that fella look at it. He'll know. Yeah, huh? Didn't find anything big enough to suit you? Oh, yeah, I got one big enough, but uh, I just want you to look at it and see what you think of it. It is. All right, be glad to. Good grief. Is this it? Yeah. I just can't possibly. I've never in my life. Yeah. Well, let me examine this better. Yeah, that's what we come in here for. I've been in the jewelry business here for years, but... What's he doing, though? No. What's that little black mm. gadget he's looking through there? Mm. That's a fine glass, I think. Zagreus. I'm going to tell him if that's a telephone mouthpiece, he's got it in the wrong place. Dog as if his eyes are that poor, he can't see a diamond that big. We better get somewhere else, Long. Where in the world did you get this? Now, I bought it from that fellow that was in your store a while ago. Not that short fellow with a black hat? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, me. He tried to sell this to me, and I wouldn't even look at it. Yeah, that's what Long Orta did, too. I reckon so. I'm a numbskull. I can see that. Numbskull? I'm the numbskull. Don't you realize you've got a fortune here? A fortune? This is the most perfect blue-white diamond I've ever seen. I can't tell exactly, but it must weigh at least 20 carats. This can't be. Unless... Uh, unless... Uh, unless what? Well, if it's what I think it is, you'll find out in due time.
That doesn't sound good at all. This could be ugly. Uh, from March 26, 1945, Lum and Abner here on Classic Radio Theater. Hope you'll take the time to visit our webpage, classicradio.stream. That's classicradio.stream. There you can stream our programs on demand, learn more about classic radio collecting, and contact me, classicradio.stream. And a reminder that uh, you can find our programs anywhere on the Internet. Podcasts are served. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. Uh, just search for USA Classic Radio Theater. You don't have to miss a show if you miss a day. Classic Radio Theater, USA Classic Radio Theater. Please support free radio by thanking this radio station and supporting the advertisers whose messages you hear here. They pay the bills to keep us on the air. I'm Wyatt Cox, and thank you so much. Tell your friends about the great radio shows being back at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station and the USA Radio Network. Has it been a while since you flipped that thermostat from heat to cool? Turn to the experts at Griffith Energy Services before you do for an $88 AC start and check to make sure your AC is in tip-top shape. Griffith specializes in carrier, but services all brands. Visit GriffithEnergyServices.com today. Your local carrier expert. That's GriffithEnergyServices.com. License number MDHVACR01-2278. Griffith Energy Services. Doggone dependable. 90 Day is going tropical on the new Discovery Plus original series, Love in Paradise, the Caribbean. It's a vacation love story where sun, surf, and seduction collide. Four Americans are traveling back to the exotic islands where they hope their sexy romances can turn into forever. Love in Paradise, the Caribbean, a 90 day story. Streaming now only on Discovery Plus. Start your free trial. Terms apply.